from the Maple View Animal Hospital Studios, this is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Beg McNichol on 99.7, 1450 WHTC and WHTC.com. Welcome back to the WHTC Morning News for this Friday, the Ides of May. I know, it's not the Ides of March. But Friday mornings, we travel Michigan with the Vice President of Pure Michigan, Dave Lorenz. He joins us via the Zoom connection. We have been doing Zoom connections since Dave taught us how to do this a few weeks ago. And what have thou brought, <laughs> Dave, on this? Isn't that true? Good morning. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting. I was looking at uh, our rosebud uh, tree in the backyard, and I think that it thinks it's March. It's been interesting how, as you know, we've been, uh, you know, asked to stay home to keep other people safe, how Mother Nature has been playing a very good role to keep us inside all this time. But before you know it, we will be getting back out there and uh, we'll be able to meet in person with face masks and all and social distancing and such. But at least uh, we won't have to just meet by Zoom meetings and Skype and all this. Dave, you heard a little bit uh, with the news about um, the Holland International Festival being the latest casualty. Uh, this week, no surprise that the uh, Mackinac Bridge Authority wiped out the Labor Day walk and the uh, Firekeepers 400 is another one that will be rescheduled. Uh, the Rocket Mortgage PGA event in Detroit is still a go, but it'll be behind closed doors. Um, we're getting everything settled in for basically a very quiet, unfortunately, summer. Yeah, it'll be it'll be different this summer. Um, and you know, let's let's cross our fingers and pray that Pfizer or others come up with a, a vaccine. And you know, you don't hear much conversation about Pfizer's uh, live test that they're doing right now in Kalamazoo. And that gives me some great hope that uh, we might be able to get through this thing quicker than most people think. But, you know, don't have a crystal ball, don't know. So the thing is, with big events and festivals, I've been encouraging delays and postponements as much as possible. But it's just not possible for so many because of contracting and the need for people to come together and planning and, and all those things. And you just simply, as an organization, can't afford to take a big chance. So uh, that's what you're seeing right now. Uh, many of these events that have to basically cancel this year, they're, they're like everybody else, they're just kind of holding on, sustaining, and uh, you know, hoping that uh, things will all be better. And I am absolutely confident uh, they will be sooner than we think. I think by uh, this fall, this winter, if everything works out, you know, we're gonna start to feel either more comfortable about these new norms, because that will happen just as we've gotten used to this stay home thing now. Um, we'll get used to the new norms by that time, or let's cross our fingers, we'll have a vaccine and, and things will be better. Get that herd uh, immunity up mm -hmm. uh, sooner than later. Um, you also heard during the news the situation involving the Holland Area Visitors Bureau. Uh, Linda Hart is now the interim director there, and I'm not going to ask you to comment on Sally's situation, but I will ask you about. Um, some tough decisions that the entire travel industry needs to make because as we return to some semblance of normal, perhaps, and I'm afraid to say this, David, the travel and tourism industry will be one of the last that will be able to recover because people will eventually start thinking about that, but they first have to take care of themselves first. Well, it's interesting. Um, in some ways, you're right, Gary, that um, certain categories of travel uh, will take quite some time to recover. The, the business travel areas, the meetings, conferences, conventions, it's going to be a while before people feel comfortable or will even be allowed to gather uh, in great numbers for conferences. But, you know, like we're talking right now on Zoom, this is good for now. And people appreciate these technological opportunities, but this will not be the final end all on how people come together because we need that tactile, really look you in the eye type of opportunity to do business. So that part of travel will take quite a while to recover, but I'm confident it eventually will. It may take a year, but we'll get there. Leisure travel though, I am absolutely sure that in Michigan and for much of the Midwest, 
um, we will start to travel as soon as we can. All the data I'm looking at, all the research I'm looking at, and just with the conversations I'm having with friends and family and, and feeling it myself, people can't wait to get outside. They want to get and travel. They want to, you know, explore pure Michigan. Um, even though we're currently operating without a budget, um, and that's a, a shame because we can't uh, advertise to encourage people to travel at that right time. I think that uh, we have this very unique situation here in the Midwest where this is our uh, cabin fever time. And it's been extended because of the cool, uh, well, let's say cold spring. So in a couple of weeks, let's cross our fingers that we're allowed to travel. And I'm telling you, people will travel as soon as they can, even though we've been hit hard financially. Travel is no longer seen as a luxury. It's no longer seen as a disposable income issue. We see travel and tourism as a right, and we will travel. So especially to places like in West Michigan and Northern Michigan that are, you know, smaller town opportunities, um, great natural areas where people can socially distance naturally. Heck, the UP has been socially distancing for eons. So we'll be able to enjoy that again before you know it. I hope you're right. And I have a funny feeling that if I'm going to be taking some time off this summer, I will be probably gravitating north. We've talked about that before. Yeah, I'm already, in fact, I just this morning, I was uh, talking to the Mackinac Island CBB director and my wife and I are already planning to go uh, to Mackinac Island in June when they start to open up. And it will be different. I mean, we're going to have to follow, you know, certain standards, uh, you know, get back to, you know, appropriate hygiene, which we should have been using for a long time. We will be wearing face masks in the public, um, especially in buildings for a while. We will have to, um, you know, you know, use different different ways to travel, but the travel industry is going to be wet ready for us. They're going to make sure to keep things clean. They're going to still be hospitable in a different way. You know, we used to always say, um, you know, we were going to have service with a smile. Well, you may not see that smile, but it'll still be there. And you're going to be smiling too. Yeah, I, I hope, I hope Dave, for all of our sakes that uh, you're right with that. If all goes well, sir, let's do this again next Friday morning with our uh, chat, uh, this time by a Zoom. And uh, hopefully we'll have some better news as we get closer to the May 28th decision about whether or not the state's going to reopen a little bit. And, uh, Dave, thank you very much for joining us today on uh, Talk of the Town, I mean, on WHTC Morning News <laughs> with the uh, Travel Michigan segment. Uh, Dave, thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Remember, your trip begins at Michigan.org. That is Dave Lorenz of Pure Michigan on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.